Well, here we are, third time's lucky, I guess. Sorry, we're experiencing technical problems. That maybe is a little bit more stable, perhaps. We hope that you can see us. And welcome this morning to St John's uh, morning prayer for Psalm Sunday, Palm Sunday. So uh, it's lovely you could join us, and uh, we're going to bless the the, the palm crosses. Um, we can't tell you that they're going to be outside the church, but you may find one if you're up that way. But uh, who 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 knows? Um, and if not, uh, then we'll save at least one or two of them until we get to um, until we get to after when life gets back to whatever normal is going to be. I suspect life isn't going to be back to normal. Um, I suspect it's going to be very different uh, to, to what it is. We were just saying this morning, just while we're waiting for a few people to, to, to join us, uh, we were saying this morning, weren't we, that, that we need to develop a liturgy or something for mm -hmm. celebration so that when when eventually we can, you know, when we can all come back together, we can have something celebratory, not just um, within the church maybe, but with the community as well. Yeah, that'd so, be a good thing to do. It'd be great, wouldn't mm. it? So and it gives yeah. us gives us a bit of time. So, if you've any ideas about that, then um, you might like to share share them with us. Um, the other thing, so I was looking because there's somebody uh, saying hello from New Zealand, uh, which is fantastic, isn't it? It's a great way to reach around the world. Um, yeah, the Zoom thing, aren't we? We're doing we're to Zoom again at eleven o'clock. So uh, that was quite quite fun last week. Um, but uh, if you haven't got Zoom, um, you have to download it. It's a program you download from the internet, and then on the um, email that gets sent around, uh, then there'll be a key and a password, so you can come and join us. I didn't know how that worked actually because it's I hadn't done that bit before. I'd always been the arranged the meter, and we were speaking to a friend yesterday, weren't we? And uh, you kind of see see other people logged into it, and then you think, ah, oh, I'm not in, I'm not in, and, and eventually you get you can get an invite in. So. Um, yeah, so we've got a few people with us now, and um, hopefully you, you you might have even made yourself a a, a palm cross. Um, so can't, maybe you'd have a palm tree in your garden, but uh, there was a thing on to say how you could do it <laughs> using a piece of a piece of paper. So these are interesting times. Good. I'm glad. I, sorry, I've been waffling a little bit because I wanted to make sure that the uh, the connection was. Uh, live and that it that it was also that it was um, that it was stable as well because it'd be worst thing in the world would be start start the service proper and then to finish we have a yeah. friend this is the third attempt <laughs> so it kept it kept throwing us off <laughs> <laughs> it's um and we've got a friend who does a live broadcast tonight he's had two weeks he's had it and he has mm. t has has problems problems with that so uh, um well there we go. So, um, you should have got the liturgy. I hope you managed to get the liturgy off uh, the website. And if you're on the uh, the list, then you probably got it sent round to you as as well. So um, we're going to start. It's morning liturgy for Palm Sunday, two thousand and twenty. Jesus is coming. Shout hosanna! He's riding on a donkey. Shout Hosanna. Open the gates. Shout Hosanna. Open the ancient doors. Shout Hosanna. Don't be afraid. Shout Hosanna. Wave the branches. Shout Hosanna. Spread your coats. Shout Hosanna. Peace in heaven. Shout Hosanna. Glory in the highest heaven. Shout Hosanna. Lead us into Holy Week. We tell your story. We follow in your footsteps. Lead us into Holy Week. We walk towards the city. We wait in the garden. Lead us unto holy ground. We journey towards death and hope for resurrection. Lead us into holy joy. So here we have some arm crosses. I'm going to hold those. As you can see, nicely wrapped up in plastic. Dear friends in Christ, during Lent we have prepared, been prepared by works of love and self-sacrifice, for the celebration of our Lord's death and resurrection. Today we come together to begin this solemn celebration in union with the Church throughout the world. Christ enters his own city to complete his work as Saviour, to suffer, to die and to rise again.
Let us go with him in faith and love, so that united with him in his suffering, we may share his risen life. God our Saviour, whose Son Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and to die, let these palms be for us a sign of his victory, and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and for ever. Amen. Amen. And normally now we would set off on the vicarage singing um, Make Way. Make Way, Make Way. And the, the, the choir and the people would be at the front and they'd be about a half, two lines ahead of us. And we'd walk around following them and we'd enter, enter the church. And somehow, wonderfully, we would all be at the same point in the song. I never quite worked out how that happened, but sadly uh, we don't have that. But we'll carry on with our worship this morning. A prayer on the way to Jerusalem. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure hearts. O living God, age after age, the children of dust make their way to holy places to seek you. Yet you are closer than hands or feet. In temples and in churches and in our homes, people make sacrifices and offerings. But what you seek is the love and well-being of your children. Your word promises that those whose hands are clean and whose hearts are pure can climb the heavenly hill. But who are we to do that? On our journey through life, our hearts and our hands have become stained and dirtied. If we have stretched out our hands in greed or lust or love of money, Lord, Lord, cleanse, cleanse us, us by, by your mercy. mercy. If our hearts have been sullied by pride or resentment, Lord, Lord cleanse, cleanse us, us by, by your mercy. mercy. If we have turned aside from our pilgrimage to follow the world's ways, or to seek false gods, or spirits other than your Holy Spirit, Lord, Lord cleanse, cleanse us by, by your mercy. mercy. Lord, you forgive the sins of all who turn to you in sincerity. You cleanse the penitent heart from all cleanliness. Lord, set our course according to your word, so that we may take up afresh the challenges of the journey to the holy city. Give us new strength to follow you on your way, so that even we may ascend the hill of the Lord and stand in the holy place. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Palm Sunday. Among cheering crowds and traitors' coins, deserting friends and hands washed clean, the mockery of power and the baying mob, as we follow your way of passion, give us the faith to bring our weak and divided hearts to the foot of the cross and the door of the guarded tomb, that they might be opened astonished and healed through Jesus Christ who carries the way to the world. Amen. So there now follows the reading of the uh, Passion uh, the Passion narrative which comes from uh, the Gospel according to Matthew. So it's Matthew 26, 14 to the end and uh, 14 through to the end and of 27 as well. <coughs> So uh, you might like to make yourself comfortable um, because it's quite a long reading. Then one of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that moment he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of the unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed 
and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes, as it is written of him, but woe to the one whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. And Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, So, could you not stay awake with me for one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away for a second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for a third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get us, get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once sent me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who, had been arrest those who arrested Jesus <coughs> took him to Cleophas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and elders had gathered. But Peter was following them at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest, and going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. 
Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. And Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? And they answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy for us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you're talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you're also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse and he swore an oath. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Jesus, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed and went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them in the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah, and they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of the one whom a price had been set on whom some of the people of Israel had set the price, and they gave them the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realised that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. 
Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified! So, when <coughs> Pilate saw, he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him, and they took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put on his own, his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to the place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And then they had him crucified. They divided his clothes amongst them by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, also along with the scribes and the elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over. Lost some of the text. Over the whole land, I think it is. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land <coughs> until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani? That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his lust. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. Many women were also there looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, 
there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. And then he rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is the day after the preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that impostor said that while he was still alive, after three days I will rise again. Therefore command that the tomb be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, this disciple may go, and st- his disciples may go and steal him away, and tell the people he's been raised from the dead. And the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, "You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can." So they went to the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. This is the passion of the Lord. Glory to you, O Lord. It'll probably just have a moment, a moment just to reflect silently on that story. don't want to say too much about that really I think the story stands in itself and it's really good it prefigures this week and all the all the rest of the actions that normally would take place during the week unfortunately um, we won't be able to follow that in the same way that we normally would what what I really love about that story is uh, when we went to Assisi and we went up into the mountains to um, St Francis's retreat and we were invited to go into a, a cave that Francis uh, would, would go and spend some time in. And he, he liked to get down into the earth. He's very, very earthy, St. Francis. But he liked to get down into And he loved caves because he had that belief, didn't he, that, that, that when uh, when the crucifixion took place and there was, there was this the, the huge earthquake, that all the caves, all the significant caves in the world had kind of been created. So he kind of used to spend quite a lot of time in caves because it was a, it was he felt closest to Jesus in the time of the, <coughs> the crucifixion and obviously then then the resurrection. And I just um, I always always think about that, and uh, I always think about the centurion as well because the centurion is there to to represent us Gentiles, really in a recognition that um, there's another centurion in earlier on in the story who Jesus um, cures his servant. And this engagement that uh, Jesus has with, with with the Roman Empire as well. Very familiar story uh, for a lot of us. Um, we hear it each year and we hear it in its entirety. And I think hearing it like that really makes it a special kind of special kind of time. So if we go back to our liturgy, there's uh, the next bit is entitled Welcome to the City, but one wee word of advice. <coughs> Lord Jesus, if only you would come to our city, or we might say town, since we live in a town, like you did to Jerusalem. We have some great hymns to sing to welcome you. Our guitars would be out to lead the singing. We'd wave our scarves and dance. We would get a real red carpet. You would get a real red carpet welcome. Five star treatment. There would be a real religious revival. It would be wonderful if only you would come here to our country to rescue us. But in case you do, just one wee word of advice. Stick to religion, but be careful. Don't interfere with politics or economics or big business and all that. 
and be careful not to make unpopular changes in the way that we worship. Save us from what might happen in the next life, yes, but leave us to go our own way, the way we are used to in this life. If we get it wrong for our city, who knows? We too might have to liquidate you. Going up to Jerusalem. Loving God, at this time we remember that going up to Jerusalem cost Jesus his very life. So we come before you, conscious of the way religious words and holy phrases can slip so easily from our lazy lips and our hardened hearts. What we do really know of your madness truth, your rock-hard integrity, the depth of your suffering for love us all. Forgive us for the shallowness of our faith and the timidity of our following. Forgive us for the ready excuses we make for going our own way and claiming it as yours. Turn, Turn us round again, again we, we pray, pray, by your Holy Spirit, Spirit active within us and among us. us. Show us how to be open again to your faithfulness and to your freedom, that we may live new lives and be again bearers of the seeds of the kingdom of heaven. So we pray for the world, for the church and for ourselves. As we are restricted in what we can do and must worship in households rather than in church buildings, help us to remember that church is not closed. For church is people, not buildings. We pray for all with whom we normally worship Sunday by Sunday. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Holy God, we pray for those in authority as they grapple with the unexpected. Guide those who are given the world's leaders knowledge and expertise in these times. Give wisdom and courage to all in leadership. And when this, when this is all over, may humankind emerge strengthened. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Holy God, as we hear and see the news and exchange thoughts on social media, help us to remember all those less fortunate than ourselves, among them those who are lonely, those who are angry, those who are distressed, those who are at their wit's end, those who are struggling to get home, those who cannot get the help they need. We ask that all who are affected by this virus be held in your loving care. <clears throat> in this time of uncertainty, help us to know what is ours to do. We know that you did not cause this suffering, but that you, that you are with us in it and through it. Help us to recognise your presence in acts of kindness, in moments of silence and in the beauty of the created world. And we pray for those who are suffering who are known to us. For Pearl, Alice and Darren, Doreen, and in a moment of silence, any others who are known to us. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Holy God, we remember all those who are working to keep things going, those working in the NHS and those around it helping to keep things working, those keeping our streets clean and collecting our rubbish, those harvesting, delivering and selling the food in our shops, those keeping us secure and our utilities functioning, those looking after the children of key workers, those helping to care for the elderly and vulnerable, clergy of all religions seeking to minister in difficult times. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Holy God, we remember those who have died, whether from COVID-19 or from other causes. We pray for their families and friends, especially as they arrange funerals so different from what they had expected. We pray that they and we 
may come at the last to find peace in your presence. We especially remember Patricia Tanti at this time and pray for her family. God, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us in a traditional form. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy, thy will be done, done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the thine is the kingdom, kingdom the, the power and, and the glory, for ever and, and ever. Amen. <coughs> well, there is no peace, but um, uh, I can't let me do it. Is it peace? Peace be peace with you. you. <laughs> so, um, of course, you can exchange peace with your your, your family and friends who are oh, your family who are around you. I don't know if else should be there. So. Um, <coughs> notices do um i'm really going to apologize to tim because tim gave me a couple of things to say to you and i tried to find them before uh, we did the live stream and i couldn't i couldn't find the email so my apologies um to uh, tim uh, there's a live stream at, at 11 o'clock if you'd like to join us that's uh, sort of in about half an hour because you're trying to make a cup of tea um it was quite fun last week um you uh, you need to download uh, zoom and what I'll do when we log off here is, is I'll send an invitation out to everybody who's on the, um, everyone that's in John's list. If you want the thing and you're not on that list, uh, you could you could just uh, message me on um, Facebook or leave me a, leave me a note. Um, I'm just having a look at the list of uh, people who are, there's loads of people from all around place all over the place so it's really good you could come and join us this morning and um, thank you if you are from somewhere else um, do take uh, St John's welcome back to your community if you're you're going to um, uh, if you're going to be in contact with them and uh, I think as we said last week there was there's a bit a few people comments from Trinity which is uh, in America and there was somebody says so somebody certainly um, who's joined us from New Zealand whether they're live streaming with us or not um then uh the, they certainly logged in this morning so hi hi to you and uh thanks for thanks for joining us last week i can't remember how many people looked at the video it was more than a thousand people wasn't it does it mean that they were streamed they streamed with us but but they had a look at it you know that it, it passed before their eyes as it were so um hopefully st john's church is getting a little bit um better known um, thank you to everybody who's been doing things this week for the, all the phone calls that have been made to people. Um, if if you would like to phone me, please do. I'm, I'm here, <laughs> not not going anywhere. So uh, you can get me on the office phone number. You get that from the from the website if you need it, or you can email. Again, I uh, enjoy answering emails, um, or we might even FaceTime. So um, yeah, please do. Uh, if you want want to chat about anything, then please do um, give give me a shout, and I'll try and get back to you. And thanks for coming. Uh, does that government warning is there? Stay indoor or stay stay within your own home. But you know, do do enjoy the sunshine. It's, it's going to be another nice day. Um, and stay safe and um, stay well. And thanks for being with us this morning. Life is short. We do not have too much time to gladden the hearts of those who travelled away with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind, and may the divine mystery, who is beyond our ability to know, but who made us, and who loves us, and who travels with us, bless us, and keep us in peace. Amen. Amen. And just right at the end, I should say that uh, the liturgy, most of the liturgy today came from Palm Sundays from Eggs and Ashes, which was written by Ruth Burgess and Chris Foley, Foley Hill, Foley Hill. Um, and they are both um, a part of the uh, Iona, uh, the Wild Goose Worship uh, Group. And uh, you can see more of their work in their, in their book. And we thank you for to them for allowing us to uh, use the material and for freeing up the copyright so we can use it. Do join us at 11 o'clock on the Zoom um, or leave comments for us. We're still trying to learn what to do. 
I'm trying to work out how you put some music into this. Uh, so happy for comments and happy for uh, uh, any feedback that you'd like to give us. And thanks very much. Have a really nice day and a really nice week. We're hoping that we might do something else in the week and certainly we'll probably think about doing something on Thursday and possibly there might be a recorded thing on for Friday. Um, but we'll certainly be back here next Sunday for um, an Easter service. Um, we'd be really um, pleased if you could join us uh, for any of those things. Stay safe and stay well. Thanks for being with us. <laughs>